Hi, welcome to this question again where in the first part I did it by using a Venn diagram and now I'm going to show you how you can do this problem by using a tree diagram. Now just to take you through the question just in case uh, it's too small to read. What we've got is a group of factory workers were questioned by a popular health magazine and two-fifths were found to take regular exercise. When asked about their eating habits, two-thirds replied that they always ate breakfast. And of those who always ate breakfast, nine twenty-fifths also took regular exercise. And what we've got to do is find the probability that a randomly selected member of the group in part A always eats breakfast and takes regular exercise, in part B does not always eat breakfast and does not take regular exercise, and in part C We've got to determine, giving your reason, whether or not always eating breakfast and taking regular exercise are statistically independent. OK, so if we're going to answer this by way of a tree diagram, then what I would suggest that you do is your diagram looks something like this. It's going to have two trials, OK, that's the sections here between the lines, the dotted lines here. And you could put exercise if you wanted in the first trial and then taking breakfast in the second trial. But if you experiment with this, taking breakfast in the first trial is the easier of the two options. So we need to label this tree diagram, OK? So what are we going to first have? Well, We'll consider taking breakfast. Now, the probability of taking breakfast, we're told, is two-thirds up here. Two-thirds always at breakfast. So we'll put that in as the probability of taking breakfast equals two-thirds. So the probability of not taking breakfast, I'll just do that with B with a little dash there, is going to equal one-third. OK, remember these probabilities must add up to 1. Now we go on to taking exercise. And you've got to be careful here. What we've got is, for this one, we're going to have this as the probability of taking exercise given right, that you had breakfast. OK, it's not probability of taking exercise, not probability of just E. And we know what this is. We're told up here that of those people that had breakfast, 9 twenty-fifths also took regular exercise. So that is this probability here, 9 over 25. So that means for this branch here, the probability of someone not taking exercise, that's E with a little dash, given that they took breakfast, must obviously be the remainder from one whole one. 1 minus 9 twenty-fifths gives us 16 twenty-fifths. So 16 over 25 goes in there. What would this outcome be? OK, this would be the probability of taking exercise given that you didn't have breakfast. OK. Now what is that? Well, we don't know at this stage. And this branch here would be the probability of not taking exercise given that you didn't have breakfast. And we don't know what that is either. As soon as we get one of these probabilities, then we'll have the other one because we can just take one away from one. Well, we can work this out later on in the question. But for the first question, what we've got here is find the probability that a randomly selected member of the group always eats breakfast and takes regular exercise. So in part A, what we're looking for then is the probability of someone taking breakfast and regular exercise. OK? And to work this out from the tree diagram, we need to start from here, always start from the beginning of the tree diagram. 
we go up here for the probability of someone taking breakfast and then they must do regular exercise so it's going to be this route through here okay so we can write this as the probability that someone has breakfast and then they go on to take regular exercise given that they had breakfast um, if we work this out we're going to have two-thirds times nine twenty-fifths. You always multiply when you go along the branches of a tree diagram. So two-thirds times nine twenty-fifths. Now what does that give us? Well if you work that out you end up with six out of twenty-five. Six twenty-fifths for that probability. Now for the next part the probability that someone does not always eat breakfast and does not take regular exercise well that's going to be answered by someone not taking breakfast and not taking regular exercise it will be this probability of a third times whatever this probability is so we're a bit stuck at this point because we don't know what this probability is so to get around this what we can do is go back to this probability up here. We haven't used it so far. The probability that someone takes regular exercise, we're told, was two-fifths. So we know that the probability of E is two-fifths. So what we can do for this one, let's just label it part B, we've got to calculate the probability of not B and not E to answer this question. We need this probability so we can turn to the probability of E and the probability of someone taking exercise would be worked out by saying that okay they could have breakfast and take regular exercise so we write that as probability of taking breakfast and having regular exercise or which is a mutually exclusive event we add that they might not have had breakfast but take regular exercise. That is the probability that they don't have breakfast but they go on and have regular exercise. Now we know that the probability of taking exercise as I said earlier we're told up here is two-fifths. So we've got this as two-fifths and this equals the probability of breakfast and exercise which was given by this result up here where you went through the tree diagram like this and that turned out to be 6 25ths and as for this probability not having breakfast and taking regular exercise this would be one third times the probability of E given not B so that would be one third times the probability of E given no breakfast. Now I'm running out of room here but I'll leave it up to you to just solve this equation make this the subject okay and you should find that you end up with the probability of E given not B, okay, probability of taking exercise given that you didn't have breakfast, turns out to be 12 over 25, 12 twenty-fifths. As I say, I'll leave it to you, um, just take 6 twenty-fifths from the two-fifths and then times through by 3 and you should find that you get probability of E given not B, 12 twenty-fifths. Okay, we can add this to our diagram here, our tree diagram. So we've got that this probability in here is 12 out of 25. And if we take this away from 1 we end up with the probability of not E given not B turns out to be 13 25ths. Now that the tree diagram is complete we can answer B the probability that someone does not always eat breakfast and does not take regular exercise because that would be given as the probability of not breakfast 
and not taking regular exercise. That is given by this route through here. The probability of not breakfast and we, we carry on and we multiply it by the probability of not taking exercise given that they didn't have breakfast. And if you put these probabilities in, be one third times 13 twenty-fifths. One third times 13 twenty-fifths. And what does that come to? Well, it comes to 13 over 75. 13 seventy-fifths then. Now we've got in part C to determine giving a reason whether or not always eating breakfast and taking regular exercise are statistically independent. And just as a quick reminder about independence, if you've got two events A and B and they're independent if the probability of one event given another, let's say probability of A given B, is always equal to the probability of A. A is unaffected by the occurrence of B. Or another way of looking at it is the probability of A and B occurring always turns out to be the probability of A times the probability of B. Now I used this bottom rule in my last video to prove whether they were independent or not independent when I was handling the Venn diagram method. And what I'm going to do now is use this one. Not to say you can't use this, you can try it, okay, if you like. I'm going to just show you how we can use this version in this question. So for part C, let's just put it here. Okay, we'll come down here, let's just bar this off, okay? For part C, we'll move this over as well. For part C then, Let's have a look at the probability of E given B. Probability of taking exercise given that you had breakfast. Well, we've got it up here. It's 9 25ths. Now, what is the probability of just taking exercise? Well, the probability of just taking exercise we found was 2 fifths. It's set up here as well. Okay, so we know that this is two fifths. And what we can see from this result is that the probability of E given B clearly does not equal the probability of E. So by this result, we can conclude that therefore our events are not independent. So, I hope that gives you some idea of the tree diagram version of answering this question. And you can compare the two methods, the Venn diagram method or the tree diagram method, and make up your own mind which you think is the easier of the two options.